Okay, our second speaker is Jacob Bum Bumper Hornberger. He's the founder and president of the Future of Freedom Foundation. And his organization has just won an outstanding uh, an award from Ron Paul's Liberty in the Media Awards for the Outstanding Freedom website, which is a really great uh, accomplishment. So, uh, Bumper. One of the fascinating parts of the revolution in Egypt is the lessons that that revolution holds for us Americans. One of the most persistent and insistent demands of the demonstrators has been for the Mubarak dictatorship to lift the nation's anti-terrorism law. Now, this was a law that was enacted in the height of an emergency, the assassination of the president of the nation 30 years ago. It was a temporary measure designed to last only until national security was secured and until the war on terrorism in Egypt was resolved satisfactorily. It is this anti-terrorism legislation that enabled the Egyptian dictatorship to commit unfettered searches of people's homes and businesses in order to protect the nation from the terrorists. Warrantless searches to arrest people arbitrarily, simply on suspicion of being involved with a terrorist group. Again, to protect the nation and to protect the national security. To detain people in Egyptian jails indefinitely on suspicion of being a terrorist. And of course, to secure information about possible future terrorist attacks, future assassinations of government officials through torture. Torturing these suspected terrorists to divulge that information, to protect the nation, and of course, where necessary, to engage in extrajudicial executions of people engaged in terrorism. And what's fascinating about this is that after 30 years of suffering under these powers of this anti-terrorist legislation, the Egyptian people have figured out that this, all this, is an attribute of tyranny. And what's fascinating is at this very same time that this revolution has been taking place and this demand has been being made and is still being made to lift this anti-terrorist legislation, right here in the United States, we have the members of Congress, the President of the United States, that are doing everything they can to extend and expand the anti-terrorist legislation that came into existence in this country at the height of an emergency, the 9-11 attacks, that is only temporary until the last terrorist is killed, and it revolves around national security and designed to keep us safe from the terrorists. When the Patriot Act came into existence, this opened up the floodgates to warrantless searches and seizures. Sure, they may have their little technical requirements that, oh, they have to have reason to believe that the person might be involved with terrorism, but for all practical purposes, they have unfettered right to go do their little sneaks and peeks, breaking into people's homes, breaking into people's business, because you know what? They know that nothing's going to happen to them if they don't follow the little technicalities. If they can get away with torture and destruction of evidence of torture and get away with kidnapping and illegal NSA spying and illegal deals with telecoms to spy on their customers and snitch to the government, they can get away with anything. I mean, the, we live in the era of simply unfettered searches. We live with that cloud over our lives. You know, you've got these NSA letters where they send a letter to your bank or financial institution 
No probable cause. No going before a judge and showing a reason why they need these things. Just a little letter that they themselves write saying, deliver that customer's financial records to us because we suspect he might be involved with terrorism. And, oh, by the way, if you, turn, if you tell the customer that we've done this, we will come after you with a felony prosecution and we will put you in jail for many, many years. And all designed to keep us safe. And you've got that inane uh, library requirement where they're monitoring what people are reading in order to protect us from the terrorists. And you see, it's not just the Patriot Act. I mean, we may favor the repeal, and we do favor the repeal of the Patriot Act, but that's not going to solve the problem here. That's just part of the problem. You've got to put the Patriot Act in the, in, in the full mosaic of this war on terrorism legislation and processes that have come into existence since 9-11. I mean, you've got to give credit where credit is due to this dictator of Uberic. At least he went... To the, to the Egyptian parliament and got this thing enacted by the parliament. George W. Bush after 9-11, ruled by decree. He went and got his lawyers to say, you're a commander in chief. We're at war now. We're, we're at war against the terrorists. You can do whatever you want. You have omnipotent powers. You want to go out and make deals with telecommunications companies and spy on Americans? You got that power. You want to search people's homes and businesses? You got that power. You want to assassinate people, including Americans? You got that power. You're a commander in chief. You've got that helmet on. And so they didn't even go to Congress when they developed this inane concept called the enemy combatant doctrine which enables them to do exactly what Mubarak had the power to do, go out and pick up any American simply by targeting them and saying, you're a terrorist. And we now can put you in a military dungeon. We can whisk you to Guantanamo if we wish. We can torture you. We can isolate you. We can execute you. We can do whatever we want. Oh, by the way, we have special tribunals to handle these things, just like Lou Barrick's legislation at National Security Courts. And all of this to keep us safe. To protect us from the terrorists. The exact same justification that the Mubarak dictatorship has used for 30 years. And that's the anomaly here. You see, this crisis in Egypt has almost certainly caused inner conflict within the American people. Because here they're celebrating, they're watching people celebrate the toppling of this dictator demanding that the first thing this, this military regime do is lift this anti-terrorist legislation while Americans are over here saying, wait a minute, this anti-terrorist legislation is pro-freedom, it's pro-democracy, it's to keep us safe. Please expand it, extend it, protect us, make us safe. And it goes even deeper than that. You see, because while the world is celebrating the toppling of a dictator, U.S. officials, despite their ostensible, ostensible you know, celebration of this thing, are very conflicted. And so are a large segment of the American people. Because you see, this was our government's dictator. This was our government's torture machine. It wasn't just the tear gas canisters that were made in America. It was the instruments of torture. It was those torture rooms that were paid for with U.S. taxpayer cash in the form of foreign aid to this dict dictatorial regime. This was our ally. This was our friend. The Vice President Suleiman was our torture. He was the guy that struck the torture rendition deal with the CIA that enabled the CIA to kidnap a man in, in, in Italy and rendition him to Egypt to get tortured. So that our government could say, we are exceptional. We don't torture. It's people that torture on our behalf. And so here's the anomaly. That here these people are recognizing that anti-terror legislation is an attribute of tyranny. Over here, Americans are thinking, oh no, the Patriot Act, the enemy combatant doctrine, the power to assassinate, the power of indefinite detention, Guantanamo, this is all freedom. This is pro-freedom. And while the rest of the world celebrates the toppling of a dictator, something you'd ordinarily think is something to celebrate, 
Large segments of American society are lamenting, are sad, including large segments of the U.S. government, over the fact that this is America's friend, our torture, our ally. If this isn't enough to give us a danger signal in this country, I don't know what is. This is like a yellow light or a red flashing light that something's wrong in this country. This is the time for us to do some serious soul searching. Because when a large segment of your nation is lamenting the toppling of a brutal dictator, one of the most brutal in history, and celebrating and trying to expand legislation that the rest of the world is recognizing as tyranny, that's the time for soul searching. We need to be asking ourselves the same kind of questions that our American ancestors were asking in 1776. The same kind of questions they were asking in 1787. What does it mean to be free? What does it truly mean to be free? What is the role of government in a free society? And what is the duty of the citizenry when a government becomes destructive of the legitimate ends of the people? And in order to do this soul searching, we need to return to first principles. And we have this heritage of first principles when it comes to liberty. We can go back to the Declaration of Independence when Thomas Jefferson reminds us that all men, not just Americans, but Egyptian people, people all over, all over the world are endowed with certain fundamental rights, inherent rights, God-given rights, natural rights. The right to be secure in your homes and your belongings and your, and, your, and your papers. The right to privacy. To be able to do whatever you want in your own home as long as it's peaceful. The right to be left alone. To have some dignity as a human being without having to kowtow and lick the boots of some government official. Everybody in this room understands the, the importance of economic liberty, importance of the right to keep and bear arms. But what we've got to keep in mind is another principle, founding principle, that came into existence in the Constitution, the other founding document of this country. Now we've got to remember what that Constitution is. You know, people tend to think that this federal government is like God. Like it's always been there. You know, in the beginning was the federal government. <laughs> you know? Not so. This federal government was called into existence by the Constitution. That was the purpose of the Constitution. To call into existence the federal government. And a lot of people were leery of this thing. Americans, just people like you and me. They, they were very leery of this thing. And why? Because they suspected that this federal government would become like a Mubarak dictatorship. Or a British dictatorship. Because they had the experience of British dictatorships. Dictatorships that were just as bad as the Mubarak dictatorship, if not worse. So they understood that the Constitution not only would bring the government into existence, but that it would be a straitjacket 